Makeup. I'm your host, Sarah Ingram, and we're bringing you technology and science news courtesy of our friends at Satura. We learn about scientists hacking into nature, how the deep sleep space of sci-fi movies could soon be a reality, self-driving cars, and how I could pretty much soon be Harry Potter. Scientists have found a way to hack plants to maximize their photosynthesis capabilities. By incorporating nanomaterials into the energy producing structures inside of plants, scientists have enhanced the photosynthetic ability of chloroplasts and tripled a plant's energy producing potential. The team used carbon nanotubes to turn an ordinary plant into a super plant using a dye that changes color when it absorbs electrons. These charged particles are produced during photosynthesis, so the more photosynthesis that's going on, the more dramatic the change in the color of the dye. Even at their most productive, plants are only capable of absorbing about 10% of full sunlight, so soon we'll be breathing in some beefed up fresh air. <sighs> Using a combination of four lenses, scientists have developed a cloaking device that's capable of cloaking across the entire spectrum of light. The latest effort developed at the University of Rochester is inexpensive and uses readily available materials in a novel configuration. There have been many high-tech approaches to cloaking and the basic idea behind these is to take light and have it pass around something as if it isn't there, often using high-tech or exotic materials, which is exactly what they did. The Rochester cloak can be scaled up as large as the size of a lens, allowing fairly large objects to be cloaked. Unlike other devices, it works for the whole visible spectrum of light, rather than only for specific frequencies. And you can even build your own. Watch out Hogwarts, I'm coming. The suspended animation and cryosleep of Futurama and Alien might soon be a reality for astronauts traveling far distances. A NASA-backed study explores putting the astronauts in a deep sleep called torpor that would use existing medical procedures used for hypothermia to reduce astronauts' metabolic functions. Coupled with intravenous feeding, a crew could be put in hibernation for the transit time to Mars, which under the best case scenario would take 180 days one way, and they are already testing this deep sleep in week-long spans. This would significantly cut down the cost and resources required for space travel. I just hope they're all prepared to fight off waves of alien monsters when one of them inevitably wakes up to an empty spaceship. Just saying. A 36-year-old Swede is the world's first woman to give birth after a womb transplant at the University of Gothenburg's hospital. Because of a genetic condition called Rokitansky syndrome, the new mother was born without a womb, although her ovaries were intact. The replacement organ came from a 61-year-old woman, a close family friend who had been through menopause seven years earlier. The organ was transplanted in a 10-hour operation last year, and the woman gave birth via cesarean section last month to a healthy baby boy. This is an incredible breakthrough for infertile women, and we send our congratulations to the new happy family. Tesla refuses to be left behind in the race for self-driving cars and recently made a big announcement that they could have one available as early as next year. The Model S P85D was recently announced. It seats four and has an impressive 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 3.2 seconds, which is way faster than any human being would reasonably need. They will use a combination of various sensors, image recognition, and long-range ultrasonics to be capable of self-driving 90% of the time. The driver can take his or her foot off the pedal, hands off the wheel, and enjoy the ride, while the car follows the lines of the road, reads the speed limit signs, and adjusts the speed. The car has multiple sensors that can see through fog, snow, dust, or rain, which means you're getting a safe ride. This won't be a cheap ride, starting at around $120,000, but it will be a lot cheaper than some of the comparable models available now. Now all I need is an added feature that allows me a sassy robot like in Total Recall. Engineering students have created a type of 3D printed living bandage that will help treat burn victims. Both layers of our skin are made from different cells that have different structures, and it is very difficult for the body to regenerate itself. Before this invention, scientists have had a hard time trying to create artificial skin grafts using 3D printers due to the complexity involved in printing several successive complex layers, which each consist of a different type of cell. With severe burn injuries, it can take up to two weeks for skin cells to be grown in a laboratory that can be grafted onto a patient. 
Instead of trying to replicate a real human skin graft, the Print Alive Bioprinter creates a type of living bandage from hydrogel. The printer cartridge contains two separate tiny channels filled with skin cells for both the epidermal and dermal layers of the skin. Human clinical trials with the technology are still about two to three years away, but the student's invention is so impressive it has won the top Canadian prize in the 2014 James Dyson Awards program. If that last story wasn't enough skin for you, scientists are working on turning human skin cells into transplantable white blood cells capable of attacking disease. Researchers have developed a quick and easy method that involves just two ingredients for the conversion of skin cells into white blood cells. The technique will eventually be used to supply patients with personalized immune cells capable of attacking diseased cells or even tumors. Before a similar process would take two months, and now it only takes two weeks, does not produce tumors, and engrafts well. Essentially, the scientists are telling skin cells to forget what they are and become what we want them to be. I like it. Researchers have synthesized crystalline materials that are capable of binding and holding oxygen at high levels, which can then be released where and whenever you need. The material is able to store the gas at a much higher concentration than oxygen tanks, meaning it would be far smaller and lighter to carry, and it can also release oxygen slowly when put under a small amount of heat. The material is both a sensor and a container for oxygen, we can use it to bind, store, and transport oxygen, like a solid artificial hemoglobin. It's absolutely amazing that the material can absorb and release oxygen many times without losing the ability. It's like dipping a sponge in water, squeezing the water out of it, and repeating the process over and over again. I'll just be going looking for Atlantis now, don't mind me. That wraps up this week's episode of Tech Up. Don't forget to leave your comments and suggestions on Facebook and Twitter. Let us know what you think and what you want to see. I'm Sarah Ingram and we'll see you next time. Technology and science news, courtesy of our friends at Satura. Tell me what is so wrong. Tell me what you've been waiting on. I've been catching you singing along with every word I sing. Well, are you in